I'm not going to lie, digital management is not as easy as it potentially could be or should be. So Para, something that Tiago Forte has actually spoken about, is something that some people use when organizing their digital files. In this video, I'm going to build a Para-inspired space inside of Notion using the P, projects, A, areas, R, resources, and A, archives, and I'm using that as a framework to build out this space. For those of you that don't necessarily want to build this space with me, I actually have a download in the description below, so make sure you check that out. But for those of you that do want to build it or want to know how it's built, what I'm doing is I'm building different databases. So I'm using the slash command table to insert a database, and this is a database in a table view, and you can change it later on. So I have my projects, my areas, my resources, and I'm not actually going to make an archives database because in Notion, everything that you make in a database is saved. So archive is actually already inside of the database setup. I'm also going to add in a database for tasks. So Para doesn't work out with tasks, but if you're going to use Notion for task management as well, having a master task database is almost a must. Now that we've got the core databases set, I just need to put in some properties and think about what I'm actually going to need in those databases. So for tasks, there's going to be a date that I'm going to do the tasks. So I'm going to put a date property in the task database. Then I need to know whether I've done or haven't done the task. So I'm going to put a checkbox property inside the database. Now, because I'm going to be using this databases in lots of different ways using the linked database feature, so I can essentially see windows into the database, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this version into a page, which means it's still a database, but it's hidden away in a page where we don't have to see everything that's going on. Now I've copied the link of the database and I've pasted it in. Now what I've done is I've mirrored what that database is and whatever change I make here, also happens in the master database. So every time I tick a task done, it will tick it off every single place that the task database is. Now for this view of tasks, I don't want to see that table view because for me, I don't like seeing all the lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it into a list view. So it's still the same database, it just changed the way it looks. Now I'm going to change the properties. So I don't want to see the date, but I do want to see that tick box. I want to know whether I've done or haven't done that task. And this also gives me the ability to tick it off so that it can disappear from the filtered views we're going to make in a minute. Now you could format your dashboard, your page, however you want. For me to save space, what I do is I put databases next to one another. So I'm going to create two text blocks. I'm then going to drag one in front of the other. So I've now made two columns. Now I'm going to drag the two different versions of the task database in each column. Now I have the same database mirrored twice in columns next to one another. Now I'm going to change the filter on the other database. So I now have two filtered views, one that's going to show me the task that I need to do and one that's going to show me the task that I've done. And you could expand this out, add dates, add times, add projects, add loads of different things to it, but this is just basics, just I've done the task or I haven't done the task and you can see both lists. Moving up to the projects database, projects typically have tasks and we've just made the task database. So what we're going to do is we're going to relate the projects to the task. This means if I have a project, I can make tasks for that project and those tasks will then be associated with the project. This means that I can use rollups and formulas later on, but the main use of this is I can see what actions, i.e. what I need to do to get this project to where I want it to be. Now, because we've made that relation property in the projects database, it's also been made in the task database. So if we go into that task page, which is actually just a database page, you can see we now have that reciprocal relation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this property to projects because this is the task database related to the projects. So now I can see what projects are related to what tasks. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to turn this master database into a page and then I'm going to copy the link and paste it in to this main dashboard so I can then copy it in different ways and filter the projects for different views that I want to see. 
Something that you may want to do, which I know I personally do, is have a date for projects. Because if you don't have a date for a project, typically you'll just push it back and push it back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a date property, so a due date of the project, and I'm going to add that into the project's database. So for me, when I'm looking at my projects, I want to know first, what projects have I got tasks to do, i.e. what projects are active. So what I'm gonna do is filter the projects database for tasks. So if it has tasks, I know it's active project. If it doesn't have tasks, I know it's not an active project. And again, I'm going to put these in columns next to one another so I have two different lists. So now I have project one with a due date and tasks that I need to do on the left side. And then I have projects on the right that don't have a due date and don't have any tasks. Following up with the para methodology, areas such as home, work, social, the areas are related to all of your actions, your actions being your tasks and your projects. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to relate the areas to the tasks and the projects. This means I can go into the task and I can see what area it's related to. Same thing, I can see in the projects database what area the projects are related to. Now, depending on how you defined areas may change how you use this database. I personally use it as a dashboard storage database, but everyone is slightly different. Now that we've got those relations set up, I'm actually going to put project one in the work area. So I'm going to relate project one to work area. And again, remember once you've made the relation in one database, it's also going to be related in the other database. So I'm actually going to change the name in the task database for the areas relation to areas. So I know where the relation is going. And then I'm going to attach task two to the social area. Now this task could just be meet up with someone, but it's related to the social area. So I know what I need to do related to social, potentially related to work and home, et cetera, et cetera. And as you've probably guessed by now, what I'm gonna do is turn this database into a page. So it's a master database. I'm then going to create a linked database to that and paste it into the dashboard. Now, instead of using a list view this time, I'm actually going to use a gallery view. This is all personal preference. You don't have to use lists or galleries. You could use a board, you could use calendars. It's entirely up to you. I use a combination of things. I'm going to show areas in a gallery view so it allows me to put a cover photo on it. So when I go into the page, I can then add a cover. So I'm going to go into Unsplash, just type in school, work and social and select some of the preset images or you could import your own images. So you could import an image of yourself where you've gone out or just import something that you've created. Maybe you're a graphic designer way better at designing than I am and you've designed your own cover photo and you can put that into, into your gallery view. And then I'm going to go into the properties of the database and just change the properties slightly. So instead of showing the page content, I'm going to show the page cover. Now you can see, I can see the projects underneath the areas, the tasks underneath the areas, and I have a nice visual view of all the areas that I have currently in the space. Now resources as a database, I've just left it blank because resources can be sorted and dealt with in so many different ways. What I would typically do if you're just starting out with Notion, a resources database is just use it as a database to capture information in. So when you're using the clipper, clip it to your resources database and then you can sort everything and view everything from there. If you're interested to hear more about how I use Notion and what my setup looks like, make sure you check out this video over here and I'll see you there.